Hello and welcome to another accounting tutorial. Within this video, we'll be covering the topic of accruals and more specifically, accrued expenses. Well, firstly, if you could hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon, it would be hugely appreciated. I'll be bringing regular content to the channel to try and help you further your accounting knowledge and hopefully help with exam preparation. So the aim of this session is to introduce you to the accruals concept. What is it and how do we record them within our accounts? The accruals concept in itself is quite straightforward. We're making sure as a business that we're matching the revenue or expenditure with the correct period. So unlike cash accounting, where we record the transaction when the money is physically paid or received, in accruals accounting, we're recording the transaction when the goods or services were acquired or took place. Now let's have a look at an accrued expense in more detail. The accrual of an expense occurs when the business has received goods or services before the end of the period, but hasn't yet been invoiced by a supplier. Take a look at the example on screen. This business has paid rent of £1,000 per month from January through to November. Their financial year runs from January through to the end of December. At the end of December, they haven't received the invoice for the month's rent. Now, when preparing the accounts, they would need to accrue, that is to add in the December amount, because they've had the service, in this case, they've occupied the building for the period of December. So just because they haven't received the invoice does not mean that they leave it out of the accounts, because in theory, the overall expense figure wouldn't be realistic, as the rent would have been left out. Within the financial statements, accrued expenses are added to the expense account, therefore increasing the value on the account. They're then shown as a current liability in the year-end statement of financial position. This is to represent the amount still owed to the supplier. The reason for dealing with accruals in this way is to ensure that the profit or loss records the expense that has been incurred for the year instead of simply the amount that has been paid. In other words, the expense is adjusted to relate to the time period covered by the profit or loss. And the statement of financial position shows a liability for the amount that is outstanding. The double entry, therefore, to record an accrued expense is to debit the relevant expense account, increasing the balance, and credit the accrued expense to increase the business's liabilities. Now let's put that into an example scenario. Here we have our first case study. The trial balance of Hawkins Limited, as at the 31st of December 2021, shows a debit balance for electricity expenses of £800. Before preparing the financial statement, an electricity bill for £75 is received on the 10th of January 2022. On examination of the invoice, it shows that it's for costs incurred within 2021. Therefore, an adjustment needs to be made in the financial statements to record the additional expense. Firstly, let's have a look at our account before any adjustments are made. We can see that there's currently a balance of £800 within the electricity expense account. There's also a nil balance within the accrued expenses. The next step is to record the accrued expenses within our accounts. To do this, we debit the electricity expense by the accrual amount of £75 and credit the accrued expenses for £75. At this point, we have successfully entered the accrual within our accounts. We now need to look at closing off these accounts as part of the year-end process. To do this, we transfer the balance on the electricity expense to the profit or loss. In this example, that would be the current balance of £800 plus the accrued expense of £75 to give you £875. We then credit this to the electricity expense and debit the profit or loss. Within the accrued expenses, we simply need to balance off the account, which will then be brought down into the next period. So how will this look in the new financial year? Well, at the start of the next financial year, the accrual is reversed. To do this, we credit the electricity expense for £75 and debit the accrued expenses for £75. The effect of this is that we have a nil balance on our accrued expenses account and a £75 credit balance on our electricity expenses. 
So at this point, our accrued expense account is nicely tied off. We no longer have anything to do on this. But the final step is to look at what happens to our electricity expense account and examine why we have a credit balance of £75 on there. Now let's say, for example, that on the 16th of January 2022, so at the start of the new year, the invoice is paid by bank transfer. Now we record that as a debit to the electricity expense and a credit to the bank. You can see that the effect of this is that we end up with a nil balance on our electricity expense within the new year. This is exactly what we want because the £75 bill relates to our previous year and therefore we don't want this shown as an expense on the profit or loss within 2022. Right, so that does cover our first case study. I'm going to go over a second one as well. It is similar to the first, but there is a slight difference. I think it's something that's really worthwhile noting. If you feel you've grasped what you're doing at this point, you've had enough, I thank you for watching up to now. And best of luck with your cool endeavours. So case study two, Gotham Limited is a business creating and selling pieces of art. On the 31st of March 2021, they completed their first year of trading. The rent account shows a debit balance of 4,880, but on the 5th of April 2021, they receive an invoice totaling £1,800 relating to rent for the quarter end of the 30th of April 2021. What is the amount of the accrual and how is this dealt with in the accounts? Firstly, we need to calculate the amount to be accrued. The invoice for £1,800 covers the three months leading to the 30th of April, so February, March and April. You therefore want to divide the invoice by three to get the monthly amount of £600. The business therefore needs to include £1,200 for February and March in their rent account for the year end of the 31st of March. You can ignore the month for April because this would fall into the next year's account, as it should do. Let's have a look at the accounts as they currently stand, with no accrual entered. So we have a balance on the rent expense account of £4,880 and a nil balance on the accrued expenses. The first step will be as we did before to record the accrual within these accounts. To do this, we debit the rent expense for £1,200 and therefore increase the amount on the expense account and credit the accrued expense account, i.e. increasing the business's liabilities. Now the next step will be again to close off the accounts at year end. To do this, we will transfer the balance on the rent expense account to the profit or loss. So 4,880 plus the accrual of 1,200 equals 6,080 pounds. We then balance off the accrued expense account by showing the balance carried down, which will then be brought down in the new financial year. So finally, at the start of the next financial year, the accrual is reversed. To do this, we credit the rent expense for £1,200 and debit the accrued expenses for £1,200. The effect of this is that we have a nil balance on our accrued expense account and a £1,200 credit balance on our rent expense. So at this point, our accrued expense account is tied off there's nothing more to do on this. And then within the rent expense, we can expect the 1200 to be invoiced and paid sometime around the start of the new financial year. This would then be recorded as a debit in the rent expense, which will be offset against the £1,200 credit balance already in there. The final part that I'd like to show you here is just how this would look in an extended trial balance. So using case study two, we can see that the rent has an existing balance of 4,880. We then enter the accrual within the adjustments columns to show the increase to the rent account. And we then enter it within the credit side of the adjustment column. This would then show the accrual amount. The existing balance plus the adjustment is then transferred to the profit or loss and the accrued expense is shown as a liability within the statement of financial position. So that wraps up the video. Thank you for watching, it's really appreciated. Again, if you could hit subscribe and like the video, that would be absolutely fantastic. 
I really hope that it's helped in giving you some extra information on how to sort of treat accruals, how you go about recording them in your accounts. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.